Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's Devotional Moment. I'm Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you turn with me to Psalms 26? We're going to be reading verses 1 through 3, and we're also going to spend some time in Psalms 28, verse 6 through 8. While you're turning there, let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for this glorious day. Lord God, we just give you praise today that we are alive and we're healthy, Lord God, that we can just open our mouth on this day and say thank you for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I just pray that this devotional this morning would bless your people and bless them to the fullest in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Psalms 120, uh, 26 verse 1 to 3 says, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. Chapter 28 Verse 6 says, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge for his anointed. Hallelujah. The title of this devotional this morning is The Great Defender. A defender is an outfield player whose primary role is to stop the attacks during the game and to prevent opposing teams from scoring goals. This is what the Holy Spirit does in the life of the believer. He helps us to stop the attacks of the enemy and he prevents him for infiltrating our armor, amen, and scoring goals against our life. The verse, the scripture says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God lifts up a standard against him. What is a standard? A standard is a rule or a principle that is used as a basis for judgment. Now, Jesus already told us that the enemy of this world is judged. Amen. He said, when the Holy Spirit come into this world, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness. Hallelujah. And because the prince of this world has already been judged. And so God's word is the principle he uses to judge the enemy of our soul. So the Holy Spirit takes the word of God and enforces it against the attacks of the enemy. This is what he does in your life, in my life. But he doesn't do it all. We have our part to play. We have a part in this battle when the enemy is trying to come in like a flood. What does the believer do? Now we know we have the blood stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ that we lift up. And the, the name for that says that he is Yahweh. He is Jehovah Nisi, the banner, his banner over us, his flag that waves over us is victory and love. So what is our part as we fight the enemy of our soul, the enemy of our mind, the enemy of our emotions, the enemy that's trying to destroy and conquer us and our families? What is our part in this battle? One, we must know the word. Life and death, the Bible tells us, is in the power of the tongue. Therefore, we must not just know this word. We must speak his word into the atmosphere. Hallelujah. We must proclaim and declare and decree the word of the Lord. David defeated Goliath with words. He said, you come to me with a sword and a spear. You come to me with material weapons. You come to me Uh, with words of of discouragement, words to pull me down, whispering and, and backbiting and all kind of manners of things, carnal things. 
We know that Goliath came to at David with the sword and the spear. However, the Bible tells us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers in high places. Satan is always scheming. And just like God used people, Satan used people too. He said, you come at me with the sword and the spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And this day I will cut off your head and feed you to the buzzards. Revelation 19, 13 says Jesus is coming and he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Hallelujah. And his name is called the word of God. John tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And everything that was made was made through him and by him. And without him, nothing was made. He all goes on in that same chapter one and tells us that those who receive him, he has given them the right, the privilege to become the children of God. Not those that is born through flesh and blood, but those that are born through the spirit. Jesus said in John 3, 3 to a very religious man, you must be born again. Hallelujah. You must be transformed and renewed. He said, you must be born again or you will not be able to see the kingdom, nor will you be able to enter the kingdom. John 1 14 says, and the word hallelujah became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of God. Hallelujah. Full of grace and truth. He tells us that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The Lord came through Moses. But grace, God's free, unearned, unmerited favor, and the truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So if you want to know the way to walk, hallelujah, seek Jesus. If you want to know the truth, seek Jesus. If you want life, true life, seek Jesus. That's John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father unless he come through me. He is our great defender. Two, we must lift up the shield of faith. The Bible tells us without faith, it is totally impossible to please God because we must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. So no matter what is going on, when you lift up the shield of faith and you stand on God's word, the great defender will come to your defense. What is a shield? A shield protects from danger, risk, or unpleasant experiences. The enemy will always use people just like God uses us and wants to, but he wants to kill, steal, and destroy God's purpose, plan, and plans for your life. He shoots arrows of fear, rejection, inadequacy, doubt, loneliness, discouragement, and the list goes on and on. But the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. And we must lift up the shield of faith against his fiery darts. Finally, we must learn to be still. Halabosa. When God is moving in our life, the enemy gets agitated. He tries to throw stumbling blocks in your way. Hallelujah. His way to try to slander your name and, uh, and devise wicked schemes. Hallelujah. But the Lord says that when the enemy was coming against his people, hallelujah, he revealed the, he revealed the very dreams that was on their pillars so much that the king thought that he had a spy in the camp. Hallelujah. It wasn't a spy in the camp. It was the Holy Spirit of God revealing. But God says, you be still and know that I am God. I will lift up and I pull down. I turn rivers into oceans. I tell the sun to rise in the morning. Hallelujah. I uh, cause the crow to cock. Hallelujah. The cock to crow and the moon to shine through your night. I am God. I am the Lord. There is none greater than me, saith the Lord. None can defeat me. My word will stand forever and you will stand forever if you stand on my word. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord shall stand forever. The Bible says that the, the grass fades and the flowers, hallelujah, fades away. But the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, saints, and lean not on your own understanding. Just keep acknowledging him and he lovingly will direct your path. May the Lord bless you. 
May he keep you. May he cause his wonderful face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance towards you, give you joy, favor, and his peace. I love you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. See you next week.